In this video I'm going to take the drive unit out of this 2013 Tesla Model S85. This is a rear wheel drive only and I'll be removing this drive unit. But first I guess I want to get into the floor jack situation there real quick because uh, some people commented on my battery video about the floor jacks that is not safe. And I want to point out these floor jacks, first of all, they're three tons each, three ton capacity. So 6,000 pounds capacity each. So one floor jack basically can lift the car by itself. Also, if you ever lifted a car with four floor jacks, you probably know that most of the time only two will carry the weight as uh, you're going around and increasing uh, the height on each one of them a little bit, uh, some uh, jack will lose uh, weight completely there won't be anything on it um, so and these are not the cheap jacks they're not the narrow kind of the little platform that uh, goes under the car these are a relatively wide base they're heavy duty they got a bigger platform for the car to sit on and so two jacks can easily hold this car up even a single jack would still hold one side front and rear up no problem uh, if three jacks would fail but chances of three or four jacks failing i mean it's extremely minimal even if you're using a two post lift two post lifts quite frequently use hydraulics a, a single hydraulic cylinder sometimes two hydraulic cylinders okay so here we got four hydraulic cylinders so we got four times the safety while a two post lift has a single hydraulic cylinder or two so we have a lot less safety and the two post you would have to lock in place with their mechanical locks or put other ja tall jack stands underneath it to hold the vehicle up but again that is impossible for what we're doing here because we actually need to lift the car up and then lower it back down because the drive unit will be sitting on a pallet if you do it on a two post lift you may have a transmission jack or something that it will be sitting on but again you're still uh, raising and lowering the vehicle to do so so this here is as safe as one can do it <laughs> um but it is up to you i mean you do not have to do that don't do what i do uh take it into a service shop for your drive unit repair but this here is what i did In order to get the drive unit out, obviously, yes, you have to put it on jacks and uh, you will have to have something to set the drive unit down onto and then get that out from underneath the car. Um, it comes out the drive. You're not actually taking the drive unit by itself. You're taking the drive unit out with its subframe and attached to the subframe is the suspension and the brakes. So you will take all of that out with it, except for the uh, brake calipers. And in this case, this car has separate brake calipers for the parking brake. They're electrically actuated. They stay on there while the service brake caliper, which is hydraulic, you're taking these off and leave those with the car. So you don't have to mess with the hydraulic lines at all. Then you don't have to bleed the system or anything like that. But yes, it basically comes out with its suspension and with the subframe. And then if you need to swap the drive unit by itself, you need to take it out of the subframe once the whole thing is out and set the new one in there. But here for today, we're basically just taking this drive unit out and go from there.
passenger side rear. We're looking at it from underneath now and you can see I'm working there on the lower bolt for the hydraulic brake caliper, which is for the service brake. And then there's another one right above it. So these two have to come out and then you can remove that brake caliper. Once you get it off, make sure to not let it hang from the brake line, okay? So use something to hang it so that it's not hanging on the brake line. Here I'm using a rubber bungee to do so. And then I'll move on to get that bolt up there. And that bolt is actually uh, the air spring or shock absorber that comes down to the suspension and the upper part attaches to the body. So we need to detach it down there at the suspension so that we can take the suspension off with the subframe that the drive unit sits in. Then you gotta move on and disconnect the two coolant lines. So the drive unit is in the coolant loop so there's coolant flowing through the drive unit, the motor side and the inverter side. And so there is two hoses, they just look like regular coolant hoses, have regular clamps on it. So you need to disconnect the two hoses and drain the fluid into a bucket. <laughs> coolant lines we got some electrical we got the two main power cables coming in and uh, there's a cover over that so you got to remove the cover and then uh, remove the two bolts that hold the cables in and then the cables are pushed in from the top down and they got like a spring lock connector and depending on um, how old this car is and if this ever has been taken off before or not and the environment it was driven in these can be really easy to get out or really extremely hard so basically there is a, a lip on there and uh, if it's not too terrible you can get up there with a screwdriver and uh, pop them loose kind of you could use a screwdriver and uh, pop it with your hand or pop it with a hammer um, different ways to do that so it, it depends a little bit if they're really badly corroded um, this may ex be extremely bad and I believe there's a special tool from Tesla I don't know if you can actually purchase that anywhere uh, you could make your own but uh, I've seen people even cutting off the cable and then after taking the drive unit out, they actually removed that uh, spring lock connector there. So in my case, it wasn't too bad. I was able to pop them loose and got them out relatively easy. Then you got a couple more connectors with smaller wires those are low voltage wires uh, basically used for communication if you want to call it that um, so and they're forward of the drive unit in about the middle of that uh, subframe uh, there's a couple plugs there and you got to get those unlocked and uh, get them uh, unplugged after unlocking and that can be a little tricky there's not too much room there but obviously it can be done and after you have everything disconnected from the subframe and the drive unit all the electrical all the bolts um, well there will be four bolts holding up the subframe but you can break those loose but not take them out yet because you gotta support your uh, complete subframe drive unit combo there first 
So depending on uh, where you do that or how you want to do that, you could use a uh, floor jack, a, a transmission floor jack, a low one to get underneath it if you have it supported like I do. Um, if you have a flat floor, I don't have a flat floor, I'm out in the dirt, I don't have a transmission jack anyway. If you do this on a lift and you have a tall transmission jack, that would work. Or if you have a table that you can roll around, that would work. In my case, doing this out in the backyard, um, it's a little more difficult, I guess. I had to figure out somehow uh, how to support this unit with uh, pallets and wooden blocks so that I can set it down onto that and then get it out from underneath the car. Since I can't move the car, I can only uh, raise it and lower it, but I can't move it. So I will have to put it on there uh, onto what I did here is I used the pallet and some wooden blocks to support it and uh, then eventually pulled it out. And in my case, I have an additional little issue here. The ground I'm working on is relatively, and I'm saying relatively flat, <laughs> not too flat, but it works. The problem though is it's not level. It's actually sloped towards uh, the right side here as you're looking at. And as I'm working the floor jacks, as the floor jacks are on wheels, um, the car has a tendency to roll with the jacks towards the right side. So I have to strap it off to a tree and hold it in place so it doesn't roll away. Now I gotta remove a couple blocks that I still have uh, supporting the front of the car. And then it's time to start lowering the car slowly so that the drive unit will sit on my blocks there. And then I will have to remove the four bolts holding the drive unit, raise the car and pull the drive unit out. As simple as that. I finally got there where I could just raise up the body and the drive unit was sitting there on the pallet but it took a little time to get there uh, working with the four jacks wasn't too easy needed to relocate the boards underneath a couple times um, 
And then another thing I found is uh, on top of the, the drive unit, there was a uh, clamp that was bolted down holding the high voltage uh, main power cables going to uh, the inverter. I also had to get in there after I raised the body a little bit and undo that. Also, there were some zip ties in places that I had to get undone. Um, and it was just kind of tricky to raise the body up pretty straight uh, with the four floor jacks. Uh, two post lift would have made that much easier. But well, eventually it came all out and uh, it just took a little time, a little maneuvering here, maneuvering there, a little this, a little that. Just have to be careful and pay attention to all the things in there and just uh, don't just raise up, Go, keep looking under there, making sure everything is uh, all right and nothing hangs up. There are so many things that just can hang up here or there. Even my brake caliper on one side got kind of hung up and so I had to make sure uh, that I get it out of the way. So uh, yeah, but eventually we finally got there and got the drive unit out of this car. That looks like after we raised it up here and uh, yeah you can see the brake calipers hang in there attached to the body and over here you can see these uh, spring connectors on the cables there that get stuck sometimes get to see the shock there the bottom of it um, here we see one of the mounts right there one of the four that holds it also drive unit up there you could see the plugs in the back that you need to disconnect yeah just got to be slow and careful <laughs> um, and this particular uh, car here doesn't have a battery pack by the way so you don't see a battery pack there but yeah that's how this is and now it's time to pull it out from under there and I'm using my over 40 year old trusty little 25 horsepower diesel tractor here. Uh, comes in really handy. Uh, if you don't have a tractor to pull it out, you may use a come along or some ratchet straps or something. But uh, yeah, it, uh, even that is a little tricky um, with the tractor here as it jerks around a little bit, the ground is not level. Um, also make sure you always check like there my brake caliper hung up again <laughs> so but just be careful and uh, take it slow but eventually you'll get this out of there even in the backyard on uh, this ground here out in the grass and dirt um, it does work it can be done it is not hard to do there is uh, it's not a really difficult thing to do um, it's just a little time consuming if you don't have a nice shop to do it with. But here it is out and uh, well now we gotta get it over to where it goes back in to the other car and that will be part two of this here so come back for part two make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on part two. If you're new to this channel, please go check out our channel and check out all the other videos. We got a whole bunch more of good videos. And like I said, don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe. Go down in the description and check out the link to our Redbubble store. We got some cool merch there. You might like something. And as I said, uh, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe. And uh, in any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.